All right, hey guys. Let me just uh, take a second to prop up my microphone real quick here. Sorry in advance for the rumbling sounds that are happening as a result of my mic placement. Anyway, uh, I'm sitting here this evening. I just picked up Grim Dawn because uh, I never really heard of it before, but this game looks fucking cool. Kind of like the successor to Diablo 2 that a lot of people have been wanting. Um, don't get me wrong, I really, really enjoyed uh, Diablo 3. But, you know, something a little darker, a little more serious in tone. Um, yeah. So let's see here. I'm going to probably have to fiddle around with things a bit. Got most of the uh, highest settings here. Let's even do uh, high quality grass and foliage. I'm going to go on my cell phone real quick just to make sure that you guys are seeing what I want you to see on my stream. So, uh, real quick. I'm sitting here this evening drinking this uh, beer that's made somewhat locally in the uh, Hudson Valley of New York. And it is good. Uh, I've never tried this kind of beer before. It is called... Uh, I don't know the brand. I don't have the bottle in front of me. I have it in the glass. But the, uh, the the kind of beer I'm drinking is a milk stout. And what a milk stout is, is think of Guinness. You know, it's got sort of that kind of very smooth, slightly bitter taste to it. Um, but, you know, it's got seemingly good body at the same time. You get good head on that thing, and it goes down real easy. A milk stout is kind of similar to that. Um, they can add a whole bunch of different flavors. I've seen, you know, like cereal flavors, ice cream flavors, all that kind of stuff. Because if you start off with a base stout, kind of like a Guinness, what they're adding to the mix is uh, lactose. Because in the process of making the beer, one of the things does, that does not get all fucked up is the milk sugars from the lactose. So you get a creamier tasting, uh, you know, somewhat sweeter stout out of that process. So anyway, let's get on with Grim Dawn. <clears throat> I'll be watching my frame rates pretty closely tonight as I play for the first time. But the trap works. <clears throat> you seem surprised. It's been a while since we've had a win. How long will it hold? I've never entrapped a being like this. But the bonds hold. For now. How do we dispose of it? I'm just a witch. You're the soldier. If it bleeds, I can kill it. How do you kill a If it bleeds, though? we can kill it. If you kill the mortal vessel while it's bound, the spirit may perish within. If it escapes... It's listening to us. What are you? Others of your kind name us the Fury. Why have you invaded our world? Your world. We existed first. We were managed by your corrupt gods. Your pride opened the way, and now we return to reclaim what my right should be ours. Of this I'll swallow your soul. I'll swallow your soul. Destroy this vessel, and I will find another. I've tasted its desires and emotions. 
When they awaken, they won't remember a thing. The Ethereal was right. The war is lost. We're a resistance now, and we need every human survivor we can call to our cause. Maybe this one here can still die with some honor. If they ever wake up, send them to me. If they don't, bury them deep with the others. I gotta say, the uh, voice acting is not all that good. Uh, they're trying their best, but uh, it's how the game plays and everything that uh, makes the most uh, out of the experience, I think, of course. Um, and the story. The story goes a long way, and I kind of like this beginning a bit more than what I saw in Diablo 3. I like this whole, you know, demons can inhabit human bodies and leave them at a whim sort of thing. Still drawing breath, I see. You're one lucky bastard, I'll give you that. Best go speak to Captain Bourbon right away. He seems to have a plan for you now that we've spared your life. You were possessed, so we uh, strung you up. Seems the spirit fled your body before your life ran out. I'd have left you to hang, but uh, the captain had other plans. He sees some purpose in you, and I'm not going to argue. This voice acting seems a little more, like, restrained when compared to the video that we just saw, though, so... Not bad. He's, um, up the road. In the courtyard. Don't make me regret cutting you down. Well, of course, it's the beginning of an action RPG, right? The hand-holding. The, hey, what I know it's doing? really cool that you want to talk to me, but you really should go see this other guy. You know, he's he's got stuff for you to do. Uh, let's see, this bridge once connected Devil's Crossing to the Arcovian foothills to the northwest. It must be restored before you can cross it. It will take six scrap and 3,000 iron bits to repair. Not enough materials. So uh, I picked this game up through Steam. I mean, it's only $25. And a lot of people... I know it's been available. You unlock the Rift Gate. Rift Travel allows you to create a portal which you can use to teleport the Rift Gates found throughout the world of Cairn. Ah. Interesting. Let's talk to this guy. Oh, look, it's the possessed one. Tell you what, I've got something that needs doing, and I'll pay good to see it done. Not quite sure you've got what it takes, but come back with some blood on your boots, and maybe I'll reconsider. Just try to make sure it's not your own blood. All right, then. Club, club. Oh, well, not buying anything. What was that little... Come see what's left of what? Whoa, look at this thing. Huh. Well, let's talk to the captain here. You're not looking too bad for someone just come back from the brink of death. You were taken, possessed by the same creatures that have been reanimating these zombies here. 
Normally I'd have burned you with the rest to be safe, but we've lost too many people to the dead. I need someone expendable. Someone with nothing to lose, but a lot to gain. Right now, you're that person. Prove your worth to me, and the survivors of Devil's Crossing may just welcome you. The bodies of the dead are rising again in some horrible unlife. Corpses don't just get up and move around on their own. Something is reanimating our deceased with ethereal energy. We have observed the dead for some time, and they appear to be flooding lower crossing from the burial hill, just beyond town. I want you to go to the burial hill, find whatever is controlling these abominations, and destroy it. You will need to fight your way through Lower Crossing. Once you've crossed the stream on the far side of town, there will be a beaten path leading up to Burial Hill. I know I'm asking a lot of you, but I'd be asking a lot of my people to welcome you with open arms, too. Help us in our hour of need, and I will open Devil's Crossing to you. What is it now that... What are the ethereals? That's a tough question. Nobody knows for sure. Most of what I know is from old reports circulated by the Resistance shortly after the Grim Dawn. It is said that the ethereals are not of this world. The Arcanists named them after the Aether they so cherished for their sorcery. Ethereals possess living creatures and corrupt the flesh into whatever horrific shape they deem necessary. That ethereal really scrambled your memories, huh? The world has turned into a standard. You are stupid message. What are you talking to me for? Go do your mission. Okay. should speak to them. Uh, just getting familiar with stuff. Map window, achievements, options. Ah, I for inventory. Got higher armor with this thing. is for mending. Oh, it's already there. Alright. I wasn't really expecting this kind of a soundtrack, really.
select a class, huh? Soldiers of the Imperial Army were trained to survive in the most hellish conditions and hold the line against the deadliest enemies of the Empire. Soldiers prefer the use of close combat weaponry such as a sword and shield, but can also prove formidable with firearms. The soldier may lack an outright damage output is made up for in fortitude and leadership. Pyrotechnic masters of the Imperial Army. Demolitionists are part engineer and part sorcerer. They were used to break enemy ranks and breach fortifications with their devastating array of explosives and destructive magic. They usually prefer to fight at range, engaging enemies with guns, traps, and explosives, but they can also be proficient with melee weapons. Occultists, once hunted by Imperial forces in an effort to control Eldritch power, the Occultists' craft focuses heavily on summoning and borrowed powers granted by the three witch gods, Bismil, Suleil, and Drig. Oops. Their diverse arts include abhorrent curses and spells that inflict damage with poison, acid, and entropic energy. Excelling with neither sword nor gun, they can use either to augment their offense. The Nightblade. Nightblades were clandestine warriors that sold their services to the great houses of the Empire. Nightblades excel with all manner of martial weapons, but are even more feared for the deadly blade magic that is the secret of their trade. Nightblades are not suited to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with tougher enemies and rely on illusion to close for a quick, devastating attacks or fight from a distance with phantasmal blades. The Arcanists, the manif uh, manifestation of magic is not some explainable mystery or the will of the gods, but a science meant to be unraveled. This pursuit of knowledge drives all arcanists, always eager to discover a new technique to make their namesake. Arcanists warp ethereal and elemental power uh, energy to their will, creating devastating demonstrations of power that rival small armies. However, such raw force leaves little in terms of a defense. Hailing from the untamed Northland, shamans were the spiritual leaders and guardians of their people. Claiming an astounding attunement to the wilds and their patron deity, Magdragan, shamans are capable of wielding the terrible forces of nature against their foes or even calling upon savage beasts to come to their aid. Shamans excel in the use of brutal two-handed melee weapons but can easily adapt to other tools of war when conjuring their primal powers. I'm kind of thinking either the occultists but the shaman seems cool The Devotion window allows you to spend Devotion points gained by Cleansing Shrines. Oh, shit. I don't have any Affinity points right now, though, so...
All right, so sorry that took a little bit, but I wanted to uh, make sure I was making a pretty decent choice there based on my play style, and I have been playing Skyrim a bit lately, and I've been having a lot of fun with uh, my two-handed Warhammer, so... Figured I'd go uh, two-handed here. The Shaman seems pretty cool, so... I like the idea of uh, summoning elemental forces. cool that is, right? Oh, I saw a little electric spark coming from my weapon there when I hit the enemy. Just cool. to 42 physical damage. 22% armor piercing. Plus 5 damage per second. 2 to 11 lightning damage. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, I really do like games like this, but it's not very often that I personally come across something that I enjoy. Like, I can't sit down and say, oh yeah, I've played like 1800 action RPGs. I really have only, you know, gotten my hands dirty with the, uh, the more mainstream ones. But like, when I come across one that seems promising, and, you know, worth playing. Um, I'm pretty happy, and that's why I'm really thrilled. Because this seems exactly like, you know, what I'm looking for. Am I in a poison area there? The autumn fogs are appearing early this year, but traffic remains unusually high. There is a steady flow of small craft coming down from Malmouth and other townships to the Northeast. Some of these boats are barely afloat, burdened with what looks like people's every possession. These travelers, sometimes entire families, bring with them strange tales of wars and the unnatural. A bunch of hogwash riling up the soft townsfolk. Can't complain though, keeps the dock busy. Most are westbound, trying to get as far away as they can. Unassigned skills.
the art in this game is very beautiful, I must say. But still quite, you know, grim. physique yet. Oh, there's attribute points.
Just sort of looking around, making sure I got whatever I want or need or whatever. Big whoop, wanna fight about it? I'll tell you what I am gonna fight about though. I need another sip of this beer. 1.8 energy regenerated per second. Bullshit. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh, jeez. I'm going to uh, take a sip of this beer. Hold on. Dude, that's fucking awesome that they just gave me a lore bonus for reading this shit. Yeah, bear with me. I'm I'm learning here, okay? Don't get all bitchy and be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Wife is out for the evening and she has texted me.
just explore down this way really quick. I guess they're going to be supporting this game like hardcore and in the not too different distant future like I guess they're going to do DLC and everything. I guess it's been like in like an early, you know, playable build for a long time now. I'm not sure a patchwork jacket is really anything I need or want, but let's pick it up and we assess it. That's how we do things in this easy. Oh, hey. Better pants. You can't combine them, they gotta take up an extra slot, huh? Oh! Okay, cool. <laughs> well, my computer had no problem handling those particle effects. Keep in mind, I'm running this game at a, a vertical sync setting, so it's 60 frames per second. I mean, that's all my monitor handles, you know. I don't have, like, one of those fancy 144 hertz ones, because honestly, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't really care. A scrap metal great axe, huh? I want a hammer. I want to bash some fucking faces in. I gotta tell you, I'm honestly kind of blown away by the uh, attention to, like, the score and everything. Like, they really went all out. Uh, apparently, if you ever play the Titan Quest games, you know, very similar to Diablo in nature, but, you know, you're dealing with uh, the whole mythological gods and everything like that, that kind of a setting. And uh, if you're into that kind of stuff... Uh, that team, I think, had sort of, uh, that company had sort of since moved on. However, the people who were responsible for making that game, the Titan Quest games, rather, uh, were responsible for coming together and making this game. And a lot of people have been sort of, uh, talking positively about this, saying that, you know, it's a better story to watch. than uh, Diablo 3, whose story was really paper thin and the characters weren't really all that interesting. Uh, this has a little bit of that darker vibe from like Diablo 2 that most people really miss in Diablo 3, because if there was one thing that people really came down on that particular game for, It was, it's, uh, it's art style. Let's have some more of this beer, eh? My milk stout. Did I just fucking do that? Did I just sell my own pants by accident? God damn it. I'm so mad. They were like... 
see what's left of my wares. Cost 1,220. I want my goddamn pants back. Oh, wait a minute. Buyback. Yes. Oh, God, yes. Thank you. There. You can have that. Felt like there was a little tiny bit of an unexplored path this way that I kind of wanted to check out before I move a little further to that cave that I'm supposed to enter. Oh. Tainted hounds? Yeah, I'm taking you motherfuckers out. You better believe it. going to die out here. Calm down. Where are you from? I was staying with a group of survivors down in Devil's Crossing. You know, the old prison, but supplies started running low. I volunteered to go scavenging around Lower Crossing, thinking it was safe for tough, but I was wrong. I got chased in here by a pack of ravenous roof scourges, though I can't hear them maddening skittering anymore. I suppose I have you to thank for that. It doesn't matter though. The area is overrun with the dead. We won't make it five feet without getting surrounded. I suppose I could open a rift gate. What? Isn't that what those those things are pouring out of? Well, sort of, but mine will take you home. I'm having a hard time believing that after what I've seen up in Burwich. You don't seem to have the look of a taken about you. I suppose this is my only option. Nice. I rescued some dude. And he doubted me, but I saved him anyway. pieces of gold that I can't get to. A 
soundtrack is so like chill. And it's got a little bit of that head bobbing like, yeah, I'm on an adventure, but it's kind of badass, but it has little hints of mystery and oh god, what's going to happen and you know, intrigue. It's telling that there's a something ominous in the air. This is so similar in so many ways to like Diablo 3 though so far. I mean, you know, the zombies and how they're shambling around. But hey, I guess if you play a game like that, like Diablo 3, and you're not happy with it, and you've got the capability to make something that you deem that you think might be better, then God damn it, why not do it? Why not do it? <clears throat> of course, I'm not making any definitive statements here. The verdict is definitely out on that and will be for some time. I'm just saying, so far it looks like they have done uh, a very competent job with this, if not more so, and I'm really excited to see what comes next. Hey, Quirky, I leveled up. rising in droves and will overwhelm us with sheer oh come on don't be a dick so you're the one we almost hung <laughs> sorry but I can't let you enter you'll need to be cleared by the captain before I can let you through I'll speak to the captain then. Alright, I know that I haven't really been playing a super long time. But... I do want to watch a little uh, X-Files before I am too tired to watch it tonight. I bought the entire series on Blu-ray not too long ago and I've been really enjoying that and... I'm still plugging along on the first season, so... Well, there's no...
I'm gonna have to trust in the fact that if I exit to the main menu, my game is going to be automatically saved. It says I'm a level 5 shaman. My character saved there, he's got his weapon, so yep, I'm assuming that's how it works. This is pretty cool so far. Listen, if, you've, if you guys have never uh, played this game and you're into this sort of thing, if you're into the Diablo-style game, I mean, I'd, I'd be uh, a moron at this point to say, Oh my god, it's awesome! But I mean, it is a pretty promising start, uh, and I do anticipate that I'm going to be spending a lot more time on this. I mean, it really seems like they've really tried to create something a bit darker and Oh, even a little spookier than the atmosphere provided in Diablo 3. Um, people didn't really like that Diablo 3 sort of seemed to have an uh, visual influence from like the stylings of like World of World of Warcraft. To me, I thought it was pretty cool, but I can understand coming from Diablo 2, which was definitely much, 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 much darker in uh, in nature, in visual tone that uh, people wanted something that felt a bit more like a dreaded adventure as opposed to something that was just like, look at my animated characters and all these bright primary colors. Anyway, as I've been trying to say for a few minutes now, thank you very much for watching, everyone. You have a very good night, and I'll be streaming more of this game very, 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 very soon.